Now we are going to Whitebox. And for this, we are going to create a new Unity project to work in. The first thing you'll want to do is install the Unity Hub, which allows you to install multiple versions of the Unity game engine. There is a good chance that once you start working on Unity projects, you will need more than one version of Unity. That's because once you start working on a project in one version, it is difficult to change that project to a different Unity version. And if you are working with teams, you'll most likely have some teams using one version of Unity while a different team is using another version of Unity. For this demo, I'm going to be using Unity 2020.1.0 F1. Any version of 2020 will most likely look very similar to what I'm doing on the screen. To create a new project, you'll go to the Projects tab and you'll click the New button. And if you hit the arrow next to the New button, you can choose which version of Unity you want to create the project for. Then you'll choose a name for your project. And there are some pre-built settings that you can choose from, including building a 2D game or a 3D game. And for this demo, I'm going to choose 3D because I'll be making a 3D game. You can also choose where you want your project to be saved. It's important to know where the project is being saved to because a Unity project is actually an entire folder and you want to make sure that everything involved with the project stays in that folder. If at some point you're trying to save a scene and you accidentally save it outside of the project folder, it will not work. So it's important to make sure that wherever you save your project folder, that you keep everything there together in that folder. Now I'll just hit create and let Unity generate a new project for me. Whenever you open Unity, you'll generally get this pop-up letting you know whether or not there is a newer version. And if you've been working on the same project for a while, chances are you don't want to upgrade the version of an existing project. So I'm just going to go ahead and close that. And here we have the Unity game engine. I'm just going to talk a little bit about the UI for a moment. So over here on the right hand side, we have the inspector panel which is where you have information about whichever object is selected. If I were to select the main camera, I will see some information appear in the inspector that I can change for the main camera. On the left hand side, we have the hierarchy. This is where I selected the main camera from. This is where you can see all of the objects that are in your scene. In the middle, we have several tabs. Yours might look a little bit different than mine. I have some extra ones opened up, but the two important ones are the game tab, which shows you what the main camera will see when the game starts, and the scene tab, which lets you move and edit things that are in the scene. You can move around in the scene view by holding right click on your mouse to look around. The middle mouse button lets you click and drag to move around. And if you hold the alt key, you can rotate around the focal point of the camera. So there are two different ways to rotate around. If you find yourself moved away from the center of your scene and you want to get back to things, you can always double click on something or with it, having it selected, press F and it'll bring that object into the center of your screen so that you can find it more easily. Now in order to build my white box, the first thing I'm going to need to do is bring in the top down layout that I created previously. And so what you'll want to do is you'll want to find where you have that file saved in your folders. And you'll just drag it into this bottom section down here where it says assets. This is where you'll store all of the art assets and sound assets and code assets that you create for the game. So I've just imported this level layout file that I made previously. Now what I'm gonna to want to do is place it on an object in the scene. I'm going to start by going to game object and then create a 3D object and I'm going to choose a plane. Now I can just take my level layout image and drag it onto the plane, and you'll see it placed that layout on the plane object. It looks a little bit squished, and that's because the plane is a perfect square. When I created the level layout, I created it at a different aspect ratio. So what we wanna do is we want to scale this plane object. I'm going to use the scale tool and drag one of these handles until the image no longer looks squished. You can also adjust the scale here under the transform. So if you happen to know the aspect ratio of the image that you created, you could type in the aspect ratio for the X and the Z value to adjust it to the correct aspect ratio that you created the image at. Now that we have unsquished the image, we do also need to decide how big our level actually needs to be. You can use the center handle to uniformly scale an object. 
And what we want to do is we want to scale it so that it would be an appropriate size for a player character. If you are using an existing character controller, chances are you cannot scale that character controller. And the best thing to do is to first scale your world and build it so that it works with that character size. For my demo, I am going to be building this character controller from scratch. However, I still want to build the world based on a one unit character controller. So I'm going to create a cube. This cube is one unit by one unit in Unity. And so I'm going to use this as a reference to decide how big I want to scale my environment. So if I imagine this is my robot puppy character and I obviously want the robot puppy to be able to climb down these stairs. And right now I can see that this character is too wide for the stairs. So rather than scaling the character, I'm going to select the ground plane and I'm going to scale the ground plane until it is large enough that it would make sense for this character. So I'm gonna once again, move the character to the stairs. Now the stairs are just big enough for the character to come down them. I probably still want it to be a little bit larger. The best thing to do here is to pick the narrowest part of your level and use your one unit cube to measure the narrowest point to make sure that it will fit through that area. Now I'm going to go ahead and delete my one unit cube once I'm happy with the scaling. You might notice as you're looking around that the ground is very shiny right now. And if that makes it difficult for you to work, you can turn off the shininess. When I dragged the texture onto the plane, it created a new folder called materials. And here's the new material it created for our ground plane. And you can see the material itself has some shine to it. And you can adjust that by dragging the smoothness all the way down to zero. Now my ground is not so shiny. Now I'm ready to start building my white box. There are two options when you want to start building a white box. You can either build it with actual white boxes or cubes. So I could go back to game object, create 3D object and cube, and you can scale and position these objects and white box that way. So you could see I could use this for a wall and I could keep building out like that. The other option is to use a white boxing tool and Unity has a pretty good one built in called Pro Builder. So I'm gonna go ahead and import that. You'll find it from Window, Package Manager, then change the Packages in Project dropdown to Unity Registry, then scroll down to find Pro Builder. Down here at the bottom, you click the Install button and give Unity a moment to install this package. When it's done, you can close the package manager window. Now, if I go to my tools menu, I should have a new menu here called Pro Builder and I can open the Pro Builder window. And here I have some options of things that I can do with Pro Builder. If you hit the plus next to create a shape, then you'll get the shape tool. And from here you can choose a different shape from the dropdown. There are a lot of different shapes that you can choose from. And I'm going to actually start with the stairs since I know the start of my level has some stairs. The stairs have some different options you can choose to adjust. You can choose the number of steps. You can adjust the curvature of the stairs, the stair width, the stair height, and the radius of the curved stairs. You can also turn on or off the sides of the stairwell. So what I wanna do is I want to position this object in the right location before I finish making my adjustments to it. Here I can see the curve of the stairs by default is the opposite way of how I drew the curve. And so we have the option here to mirror the stairs. So I'm gonna do that. Then I'm going to rotate and position the stairs in approximately the correct place. And I'm going to make some adjustments until it looks like the stairs that I drew in my layout. Once you are happy with it, click the build button at the bottom of the shape tool and you'll see the shape is no longer blue. That means it's no longer being edited and you can close the shape tool window. Now I have my stairs built and so I can build the next portion of my level, which is this top area up here. So I'm gonna create a new shape. And this time I'm going to choose a cube. The only things you can change about the cube are the size. You'll notice though that adjusting the size with these values adjusts the tiling of the texture. Whereas if I were to instead scale the cube using the scale tool, you'll see that the texture does not tile. 
So I want to adjust my size using the settings here. That way I will be able to actually apply a texture to these objects later, which will save me a lot of time when I'm modeling. And I will, like I did with the stairs, I will position this object in the correct place on my layout. And pressing enter on the keyboard also causes the object to be created and closes the shape tool. Now if I want the player to stay in this top area here and I don't want them to jump down off the edge, I want them to actually take the stairs, what I need to do is create walls around this area to keep the player enclosed. So I would create a new shape and I would position it to the edge of this top floor area and I'll build that shape and close my shape tool. And now what I can do is I can actually duplicate this wall that I just made. So if I select this wall in the hierarchy and hit Control D on the keyboard or Command D on a Mac and move this over to the other side. Then I'll create one more shape. This will be for the back wall. And then hit build. Now for this front portion, I want a small part of the wall to come out this way and give the player just a narrow opening to get to the stairs. So I will create one more cube and position it at the top of the stairs. And just like I did before, I will close the shape tool and select this cube in the hierarchy and control D to duplicate to drag it over to the other side. Now at this point, you might notice that some parts of the level are too dark to actually see what I'm doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to locate my direction light in the scene and I'm going to hit control D to duplicate or command D on a Mac. And then I'm going to rotate this object so that it faces the opposite direction. That way it fills in the dark parts of the level so that I can actually see what I'm doing. Later on, we would actually do a lighting pass to make the lighting look good. But for now, the lighting is just so we can actually see what we are doing. So I now have the first part of the level built where the player will start up in the top here. They will walk down the stairs into this opening. And so now it's time to start building walls around the edges of my level. I'll go back to the Pro Builder window and create another cube. As you're building this, you may discover some areas where you want to make changes to the positioning of things. For example, in this spot right here, I've decided that instead of having the door on the right hand side, which I think will make it a little bit crowded, I'm going to move the door to the left hand side and have the door be over here. You do want to continue to make sure that the narrowest parts of your level have enough space for the player to get through. So once in a while, you might want to create just a regular old cube in your scene to make sure that it still fits. When you're finished with the outer parts of the walls, you'll probably want to start putting in some interactive pieces. For example, I'm going to have a door across here that the player will need a key to unlock. So what I want to do is I want to make a placeholder for my interactive object. So I'm going to create a cube which I'm going to scale to look like a door. And now I want a way to e easily distinguish that this is something interactive. So I'm going to create a new material in my materials folder by right clicking and create material. I'm going to name it door and I'm going to choose a color for this. I like to make my doors blue and then just drag that material onto the door object. Now I know that I want to have a key for this door and I want to have the key inside of this toy box, which I drew in my top down layout. So I'm going to make a toy box placeholder, which I will once again use a cube and scale it to look like a toy box. 
Now my toy box is going to also be locked and have a key that needs to unlock the toy box, which I believe was over in this corner on my layout. So since this is going to also be a locked object, I'm going to use blue for this as well. So I'm going to use blue as my placeholder for things that are locked until the player finds the key. So now I know that I need a key for this locked chest and I'm going to put that over in this corner here. So I'm going to create a sphere to represent my key. I am once again getting a little bit too much darkness in here probably because my two direction lights are both casting shadows in those areas. So I'm going to rotate one of my direction lights to go mostly straight down. Now I'm going to make, once again, a new material, which I'm going to call key. And I'll make this green and drag that material onto the sphere. Now I do also have collectibles around my level, including a dog treat here. Even though it's going to be a dog treat, I'm going to represent it just with a coin as a placeholder object, just so it's easy to recognize that it's a collectible. So I'm going to make a cylinder and scale it down, rotate it so it looks like a coin. Make another material. This will be for my collectibles. And I'll make this yellow and drag it onto my coin, which is the placeholder for my collectibles. Now, before I start duplicating this and spreading it to the other places where I have collectibles, I want to turn this into a prefab so that it will be easy to find and replace later. So I'm going to create a new folder called prefabs and I'm going to rename my cylinder collectible, drag it into the prefabs folder. Now I can drag the collectible out of the prefabs folder into the scene and spread them around all the places where I have collectibles. Later, when I am ready to replace this, I can just modify the prefab and it will update everywhere that I have placed these in the scene. Even though I don't have a lot of them in the top-down layout, now that I'm whiteboxing, I'm starting to think about all of the open space where the player needs things to do. So I am going to spread extra collectibles around that I previously hadn't placed in the layout. The other things I need placeholders for are the traps, the quest characters, and the enemy characters. So I'm going to start with the enemy characters. I'll make a capsule and I'll create a new material. This one's going to be called damage and I'll use it on both the enemy and the trap because they'll actually both cause damage. And I'll make this red. Now I'll make a cube to represent my trap. I may want to add more traps later if I need to increase the difficulty, but for now I'm just going to start with the one. And lastly, I'm going to add a capsule for my quest giving character, which in this case is a cat. I'm going to create a new material for this one and I'm going to make it purple so I can tell it apart from everything else. The quest that the cat gives us is to get the cat toy from in here and to pair the quest with its counterpart, I'm going to keep both of them as purple so that it makes sense that they go together. But for the shape, I am going to make it shaped like a coin to indicate that it's something that you can collect. Now I have all of my walls built and I have placeholders for all of my interactive objects. In the next video, we will create a simple character controller to walk around in the white box so that we can make adjustments to the design. Mm -hmm.